Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be using the Poinsettia Border Stamp Set by Studio Katia and I'm going to be playing with the Arteza Gouache and I will link a video below of a quick review and over overview of what gouache is as far as I can see anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to be working with a piece of Nina Desert Storm cardstock and this is more of a heavyweight cardstock. It's not super heavy, but if you're going to use regular cardstock instead of watercolor paper, you want to make sure that it's not too flimsy. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp my large image here a couple of times with Fade Out Ink by Ink on 3 because it's going to be kind of no line, but I stamped it so many times because I was too afraid of no line. <laughs> Except for spatters, this is the first time I'm actually using gouache. So I figured I'll share it with you guys so you guys can get the first impression, I guess you could say. So I am going to use a laminated piece of paper here as my little palette and I'm going to be using two different greens for my leaves and I'm going to go ahead and do all of the leaves at one time. So I'm just going to squirt a little bit of this on to my little fake palette here. I have my jar of water as well as a paper towel and I am using a number two round brush. I am using a very teeny tiny brush because I'm not really sure what to expect at this point <laughs> and I want to have a little bit more control. So I'm going to start by having my paintbrush a little bit damp. So you don't want to add too much water to the paint itself. It's going to have the consistency of kind of like an acrylic paint, but you want to water it down. You want to add a little bit of dampness to it. You don't want to add too much where it becomes liquidy or too liquidy, I should say. And I'm just adding a little bit of the lighter green to the darkest areas. Then I'm going back in with a damp paintbrush after I clean that off. I'm just dabbing that off on my paper towel so it's not too wet. And I'm just spreading that color around then going in and adding a little bit of that darker color to the darkest areas. Now this is not watercolor paper, so obviously it's not going to spread like normal watercolor would. Now gouache is pretty much like a watercolor, but it's more opaque. So it has some of the properties as a an acrylic paint would have. So it's kind of like a hybrid. So think of it as like a hybrid ink as a mix between dye ink and pigment ink. This is kind of a hybrid between a watercolor and an acrylic paint, if that makes any sense to you guys. So it's going to work similar to a watercolor, but it's not gonna work exactly the same. Now these colors will blend together. However, being they're opaque, if you add too much of that dark color, it's just gonna completely, you're gonna completely use the lose the lighter color pretty much for the same, the opposite way because the light will cover up the dark more than blend with it. So I'm just gonna go around and go ahead and work on all of these leaves at the same time. I am kind of giving it a minute or so between um, for drying time before I work on a leaf that's right directly next to one I've already done just so that my colors don't blend too much. It will dry fairly quickly because I'm not using a ton of water because it's not watercolor paper. So you don't want to oversaturate it either. So once my leaves were done, we're going to move on to the flowers themselves. Well, I guess they're not flowers, but we're going to move on to the poinsettias themselves, the red leaves of the poinsettias. And again, I'm going to be using two different color reds here, and I'm pretty much going to be doing the same thing as I did with the leaves. I'm going to be working on petals or leaves that are not touching or not anywhere close to one another. And once those areas are dry, then I can kind of move on to those leaves that are underneath or in between them. And those ones would naturally be darker because they would have shadows cast on them for the leaves that are above them. So I'm not going to show you all of this because quite honestly, this took me a really long time and I'm not getting results as I would with watercolor, not that I'm the best watercolorist in the world, but this, like I said, is the first time that I'm using them. So there was a big learning curve and I could tell as I went along, even though it was pretty much coloring the same way or watercoloring the same way, I was kind of learning little tips and tricks as I go. So the first time you pick up a, a different medium that you've never used before, don't get discouraged that it's not turning out you know, the way you feel like it should, just keep working at it. More than likely, you're going to teach yourself stuff as you go along, not necessarily being taught by someone else. 
So I'm gonna show you a couple of these leaves here, a couple of these petals, whatever you wanna call them, just so that you can kind of see how I, how I did it. But I'm pretty much gonna do most of it off camera because like I said, it did take a long time so throughout this 25 days of Christmas card series, I'm going to be kind of doing some random giveaways. And if you've ever watched my channel before, you'll know that I work a lot with Arteza. I think it's a fantastic company and they have really affordable supplies, art supplies. So if you want to try alcohol markers or you want to try something like the gouache or something like watercolors, which by the way, I love their watercolor, um, the they're a great company to try things out with. Their quality is pretty good. Um, it's not going to be top notch. You're not going to get Copic quality out of the Everblend markers, but they're pretty high quality for a great price. So because I love Arteza so much, I'm gonna be giving away a $25 gift card to Arteza. And they have run deals all the time, all the time, especially around the holidays. So keep an eye out for those. Um, I will link everything below as always, but also be doing that giveaway. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway is to leave a comment. You don't have to leave a specific type of comment. Just leave a comment so I know you watched the video and I will announce the winner on Friday. So today is Sunday. We have, so if you don't count today, you have five days to enter. <laughs> this coming Friday, I'm not looking at a calendar, so I don't know the date, but I will announce the winner for the $25 gift card. And it will just be an emailed gift card, so it doesn't necessarily matter where you live. I know that they do ship to the US and to the UK. So um, if you're not in those two areas, I don't know whether this would even apply to you, to be quite honest, but there will be many more giveaways throughout this next 25 days, so stay tuned for those. So I'm just finishing up, up a couple of these petals here, and once my petals were done, the inside of the flower itself, this is probably where stamping with black ink would have helped me out a little bit, but I wasn't really sure how to do this. So at first I added this really light, tan color and once I added it it was pretty much the same color as my cardstock <laughs> so you couldn't necessarily tell that I added it at all so you'll see that I kind of play around with this I wanted to add a little bit of texture but remember don't add too much water or else it's just going to spread and be one solid color being these are opaque so you'll see that I'm going to kind of pull out a few different colors and kind of test these out you can also mix these colors so I mean, you can with watercolor too, but a lot of times for acrylic paint, acrylic paints are very easy to mix together to kind of come up with the color that you're looking for. And these are the same. So here I'm just gonna mix a couple of these colors together and come up with kind of like a mauve color. And I liked that much better. It was still pale enough for the inside of the flowers, but it didn't blend in too much with my paper itself. Again, you'll wanna use a drop or so of water whenever you're blending these together or mixing these together, but not too much. If it becomes more like watercolor, you've added too much water, it's not the end of the world. These will dry just like watercolor. So just give it a couple of minutes until that water kind of seeps into the paint. And these are also reactive with water. So if you let your paint sit there too long and you wanna go back and use those same colors, you can just add a little bit of water and you're good to go. So you probably can't see on camera, but there's a couple of branches off to the side with berries on them. So I'm just going to go ahead and color in those branches. I'm going right in solid, hardly using any water at all. And then for the little berries themselves, I was initially gonna do some shading here, but decided they were way too small. And I'm just gonna add a reflection instead. So I'm bringing out a different red here, and I'm going to, again, color these in solid, and all they really are just little circles. And now, while most of the time, I'll just use a white gel pen for a reflection to add a little bit of shape to my images, you can also use the gouache. Remember, they're opaque, and it's actually a little bit more opaque than a white gel pen from what I can see. So I'm just gonna use the very tip of my paintbrush and add just a little flick on each one of those berries to add that reflection. So I went ahead and finished up this entire image here and then 
you can see that I have some fingerprints with my paint. So I'm trying to pick this up with just a damp paintbrush and a paper towel. It didn't work. Number one, it's red, so it's kind of hard to test that theory out with red anyway, but it didn't work. So I'm going to add some spatters to the background with the white gouache, and then it, they weren't really standing out. I wanted to make multiple colors here. So you'll see that, again, I'm going to bring out multiple colors, mainly kind of neutral, and I'm flicking and spattering all over the card panel. I'm not masking off my image. I'm okay with the spatters being over it, quite honestly. I didn't do such a great job <laughs> with the watercoloring, so I'm okay if there's spatters over it because it kind of hides the fact that my coloring or my watercoloring wasn't top notch. So once my spattering was all done, you can see here that I'm mixing even more colors just to kind of get different color spatters. I am gonna go ahead and trim down my card panel. So I trim this down to four by five and a quarter. So it's just a quarter of an inch smaller than an A2 size card. You will wanna make sure that this is completely dry before you do this. And then I am gonna move on to my sentiment. Now, because I have those little smudges there, I'm going to flip this around. My image was gonna be in the top right, now it's gonna be in the bottom left. And I'm going to position the larger image or the larger sentiment, this larger word, directly over that smudge. So once it's stamped out, you're not even gonna see that there was a smudge there. I like to line up my sentiments, close my misty door, and we have those grid lines on that misty door so I can make sure that my sentiments are straight before actually stamping them out. My paper was a little bit warped because of all the paper, or all the paper, all the water <laughs> that I added to it, and it's obviously not watercolor paper, so I did have to stick this down with my magnet. I stamped this twice with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, and this does take a couple of minutes to dry because this is a pigment ink. I am going to pop this up with some fun foam. So I'm cutting down my fun foam just a little bit smaller than my card panel itself. And then I'm going to adhere this down to a craft A2 size note card. I'm using the fun foam that has adhesive on one side. And then I'm just gonna use my Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back. And this will give me a couple of seconds to move it around to make sure it is centered or at least centered to me. <laughs> I just lay my Misty on top of it because the wet glue does take a couple of seconds to dry or a couple minutes to dry. And then I finished off the card with a few Nouveau Dream Drops and these are the Cloud Nine. They're basically just white, iridescent white. But that is it. That is the card for today. As always, I will leave the supplies listed below. Don't forget about the giveaway and I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Bye.